this shrink tubing, it actually shrinks down three to one. Most standard shrink tubings, they shrink down two to one. And so basically it gets much smaller and can go over something bigger, which is a nice thing. The other thing I like about this particular stuff is it has adhesive in it. And so when you go to melt it over the wires, it gives a significantly better bond and adheres better and keeps, you know, water and moisture and whatever the heck else out. Um, and so it's one of my favorites. I got this kit off Amazon. It wasn't too expensive. So I'll put a link in the description for that. I was going to repaint this uh, toolbox that the um, hammer came, electric hammer came in and I was getting it all ready and I got it to this point and I love it. The rustic look, the weathered metal and so I decided I just painted the inside black and I'm going to let that dry. So I'm just going to gonna throw a coat of clear, clear coat on it and call it good. I think it's sweet. Sometimes you don't have to fully restore everything. All right, I'm gonna take a few minutes here and talk about our ability to break concrete, drill through it, or same with like rocks or any kind of a masonry type of uh, uh, material. And obviously, you know, as humans, we've been, you know, using, bro you know, objects to break things for a long time, uh, pretty much since the dawn of time. And so right here, even though these are all hand tools and kind of the simplest tools available to us today, these tools used to be technology back in the day, being able to take a, a piece of steel that was harder than a rock and break it was not something, you know, anyone could do even a couple hundred years ago. And so we take for granted these tools because they're just, they're here, they're always here. I have been using hand tools for a long time and personally, even this, this 16 pound sledgehammer, I just broke this the other day. Um, but I mean, you've got different size sledgehammers. This is an eight pound, 16 pound. This is a 10 pound. You got different sized, uh, handheld sledgehammers. These are brick hammers. 
uh, largely used by masons or landscapers. These chisels are obviously for different things when you go to, uh, you know, chiseling natural stone or breaking a block or a brick. And these are concrete breaking, so you would smack this with a hammer and it delivers a, a, a punch right down into that tip of that, cracking into either a rock or a stone or, or a piece of concrete, whatever. Next up here we have um, electric hammers. And this was the ability for somebody to take a, essentially a drill looking tool and break concrete, brick, stone, without having to swing a hammer. And so this particular one is a half inch Black & Decker hammer. And this is its big brother, this is the two inch hammer. And if you look at this advertisement here in the, in the manual, um, this is the half inch here and this is the two inch, the big one. And so, you know, this was amazing technology back in the day. These, these probably date to the 40s uh, from what I've been able to find it. I could be wrong there, but um, the way you would use it is essentially you have this bit holder and you hold this handle. You take different bits, tips. This particular one is a cross type hardened steel. It shoves in there and as you're using it, it, it gets wedged back in there. So you take this, you slide it down into there, and then you put pressure against whatever it is you're breaking or you're wanting to get into. And then you've got a little toggle switch on off right here. It's not even a trigger. And so this is very similar to the one that's that I'm currently restoring right now, right now. To get out the bits, there's this little notch here. And what you do, because they get so wedged in there, it's almost impossible to get them out by hand. You take this wedge and you jam it in there and you can hit it with a hammer or whatever and it pushes it out. Obviously this one wasn't in there very um, very tightly just for demonstration purposes. But um, but when they get, when you're using it, it gets wedged in there. There's almost no way to get it out without you know a tool like that. And so, these are not drills. They are literally only electric hammers. It is made to produce an impact straight down onto whatever surface you're going, you're, uh, you're trying to break or whatever you're using. I mean, you can put it on wood, you can put it on concrete, but it's largely used in masonry or construction projects and whatnot. So real quickly, I'll show you how this one works. This one runs fine. This big one does not. There's a couple of handle. If I could find another handle, I'll restore that one, but there's a, it's cast, assuming aluminum, and it's got some cracks in it. But let's, uh, let's see how this one works. All right, so we got it plugged in. Got our bit in there. We'll take this and put it down on one of these bricks. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do that all day. Good Lord. Barely did anything to any of these. It looks cool. <laughs> but if I had to get a tool out to do some work, I wouldn't choose this one. So now we move from the electric hammers to the beginnings of what we today call a hammer drill. Hammer drills were never really thought of, and so that's why you see, like here's a very early Black & Decker uh, one fourth inch junior doesn't have a trigger either has this little on off switch right here and so if you needed to hammer something you'd buy a hammer if you need to drill something or, or screw something in, you'd buy a drill and so like here, here's an early keen cutter with a trigger this Rockwell obviously it's got a trigger and so they don't have the hammering ability but they still will be able to run like a hammer you know, a carbide tipped bit or something, a masonry bit of some kind, not as effectively as you could get done with today's hammer drills. But the ability for work to be done with one drill or one type of a unit was a heck of a lot easier with some of the more modern ones. So next we'll kind of look at some more modern drills. We'll start here with this corded Milwaukee Magnum drill. This is just a drill, it's not a hammer drill. Um, very powerful drill, it works extremely well for what it is. I have done a ton of work with this thing, but 
it's only it does not have the ability to hammer. And then we come to cordless. These have the hammer ability, at least that's what they're advertised as, but it's not a true hammer. And so I know for a fact, I've done a ton of masonry holes with this drill in hammer mode and it's been great. Now, when I really needed to do something in masonry, I wouldn't use this. This is for smaller stuff and definitely, you know, the majority of things a homeowner would do at their house, it would work well. Now, this new Milwaukee M18 hammer drill, I have used it. I just have not gotten any performance out of it that I need. It's a great drill for everything else. But for hammer drill, I just don't, you know, when you put it in hammer mode, you, you always hear that. It sounds like it's grinding. And what that is, is it's, it's kind of a, a centrifugal, I don't know if it's a clutch or something in there that's, that's grinding against. And same with this one, if we put it in hammer. So it, that's the hammer function. And then you step up to an actual hammer drill. So this Bosch back here is an actual hammer drill and it runs what's called SDS plus bits, which in SDS plus is it's got a groove on either side and a notch on either side. And that, these bits will only fit into SDS plus drills or you can put a chuck on this. If you have a drill with a chuck like this one, you can still put it, put it in there and use it if you needed to. Um, I, I don't, I typically keep my, my bits as kits with whatever drill I'm using. But this has the ability to have hammer drill function or a drill only function. So you change it down here and you can put standard drills in this as well, but I mainly only use this thing for holes in masonry or, or whatnot. And I've done a ton of work with that thing. It's, it's been a great drill over the years and I've really enjoyed having it. Okay, these three are considered demolition hammers and they have the ability to be used as a jackhammer or as a, a hammer drill other than the small one here this one can be used as a drill only it's got a drill only function a hammer drill function or a jackhammer function or a chipping function and so you can get different bits like you know a chisel type bit or you know a, a concrete like a piercing bit for getting into uh breaking edges of concrete or brick or whatever um, for this drill. Now these two here don't have a drill only function. They can only hammer drill or they can only be used as a demolition hammer and have the hammering function, which with one of these big ones, that's all you're really going to need. If you're going to need to drill a hole in wood or something, you're not going to use a drill this big because there are other options that are better and significantly lighter. Now each of these drills takes different bits. This drill here has the SDS plus bit, so it can take anything that the other Bosch uh, hammer drill can take. This Bosch has what's called SDS Max. It's got two grooves on one, end, one side and one on the other, and then there's a notch on either end. That is how you know it's an SDS Max bit, minus, I mean, it typically says it on it too, but that's irrelevant. This Milwaukee takes what are called spline-driven bits. And it's basically just a whole bunch of gears or a whole bunch of splines that slide right up into the drill and lock in. And what is the difference between those? Honestly, I think it started out as a proprietary type system between different manufacturers so that they could sell their bits specifically for their drills. But what has kind of taken over in the market today is that companies are typically leaning, especially in the heavier duty side, toward the SDS Max on there. These are considered mid-grade or mid-size uh, demolition hammers. These are the portable ones. There are significantly larger ones that are, that are bigger, two-handed operations that run on air. Some of them are electric. Some of them are gas-driven even um, that I personally don't own any of those. I would like to find one. If I can find maybe one to restore or something, that'd be cool. But for the majority of construction projects that I take on, this is the kind of these are the sizes that I need because even though this is a small mid size it is a beast and it can do a heck of a lot of work this is a two inch drill bit that I mean you can drill 
this thing I've run bits as long as like three feet and gotten, you know, two inch holes in, in a three feet slab. No problem. It didn't slow down. It didn't overheat. It was awesome. Um, and then this is a one inch. This is a two inch. And then these are the other couple. I'm just showing you a couple bits. I've got a bunch more for each of these, but there's a wide variety of other things too. These are some that for the SDS Max that I plan to make. So a flat spade digging bit, a round spade digging bit, a flat tamping bit and a ground rod, dri ground rod driving bit or for rebar or whatnot. They sell these and they're like 40 or 50 bucks a piece. But my thought is I'm gonna take some of, I've got some bad drill bits. I'm gonna cut the end off here and basically make, I mean, a flat plate here and weld that end to it so that I have the ability to tamp around like a post or something that I might have to do by hand otherwise or if I'm in really hard clay and it's just a ton of hand digging, I could get this out and use one of these spade bits to try and dig out some area. Or if I'm driving ground rod, I don't have to do it by hand with a sledgehammer. You can put the bit in this basically instead of a, it'd be basically like a round tube welded to the end and then you just fit the end of the rebar in it and drive it down into the ground. Um, I wouldn't make any bits that have like, you know, are going up against concrete. Like this is cutting concrete. like. If I did that and it welded right here, it would just that would break right there. So typically, spade bits or or these uh, you know breaking bits are the style that I I buy those. Now this one with the flutes, it supposedly is auto sharpening. I don't know the jury's out on that one. I I really don't have. I haven't seen that yet. I mean I've got others that have just come straight down to a point and don't have that. I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna show you how quickly I can break through some of these materials compared to older technology. So this is very capable drill um, or hammer. We're gonna switch it over to hammer mode only. All right, so you can see how much more powerful that thing is. The first brick here was clay. This was another form of, of clay, a little bit harder. These were concrete, and this block here was also concrete. So that's it for concrete. So let's, let's try it over here on some natural stone as well. This is limestone. It's actually a very soft natural stone. This is... Um, I think sandstone, and this here is uh, flagstone.
try a different bit. As you can see, this is a significantly harder material than those other ones, especially this, this limestone here. It's just not very hard, but the ability to do that with by hand or even one of those uh, cheaper or older, I wouldn't say cheaper, um, electric hammers would be significantly more work than obviously the modern stuff. But you know, we're not ragging on old technology because that's how we come, that's how we've gotten new technology, is you gotta start somewhere and advances are made. I'd love to try demolition hammers that are battery powered now. I have not had my hands on one yet to, to try out. I just haven't had a need for anything. Um, but I'd love to have one of those at some point. So, so I'll put a, a few links in the description in regards to a few of these electric hammers that I actually believe in and I think would be great additions to you know your tools and I'd love to know your thoughts on the hammers here but we are going to get back to the restoration and get it kind of finished up okay so I want to show you how a hammer like this can drill a two inch hole through concrete um, with extreme ease I've got this gate here. Right now I've got this wheelbarrow kind of keeping my dogs from pushing it open. These latches, they do a pretty good job, but it wouldn't take much and then they make a gap wide enough they can get out. So I want to install a drop rod on each gate so it drops down into the concrete and then I just have to lift it up and out of the way when I'm wanting to open the gate. So let's get to it. Slide in like this. Let's see. A little bit. I like using these construction crayons for masonry work. They seem to stand out a lot better than about anything else I've used. Safety first. Put the bit in. Line up the grooves. It locks in. Just like that. Make sure we got it on hammer drill. And we're good to go. on that one. That's how it's done.
Good enough for melting angry pixies together. So, there it is. Yeah, at least this one of my 16-pounders is back in service.